Hello everybody. Uh, now I will start the other part of this uh, solidification of welding processes and we have already discussed the different aspects of the uh, solidification in welding process and what kind of the uh, structure that the dendritic or equix dendritic or uh, other kind of the uh, solidification mode we observe uh, during the welding processes. Now little bit we will try to understand that uh, there is a heat flow in the welding process because there is a close link with the heat flow uh, heat flow pattern in the welding process uh, with the solidification associated with the fusion welding process. Now if we try to understand the heat flow in the welding process it is having some similarity with respect to the casting continuous casting process. So that is why we can bring the comparison between the welding and the continuous casting process and both are the different ways. So, I mean to say that different kind of the governing equation or heat transfer equation we can apply both in case of the continuous casting process as well as the fusion welding process. But what we can represent the fusion welding process is a, it is a well solidification is basically is a dynamic process. But when heat source moves one uniform velocity one particular direction in specific to the fusion welding process. There you can see the molten metal is created and the solid liquid interface moves with a certain speed such that a quasi steady situation prevails uh, during the welding process. So, here you can see that suppose V is the welding speed and with a particular instant of time this is the application of the heat flux from the arc we are we can assume the arc it creates some isotherm and then it continuously moving this thing and behind this there is a continuous solidification occurs, but one solidification occurs the rate of the solidification is more or less is try to achieve is the in compliances with the velocity of the heat source assuming that there is a uniform velocity of the heat source one particular direction. So, this is the most ideal situation in a welding process and we can say that definitely the shape of the oil pool shape takes a particular, uh, particular shape it takes a particular shape. Uh, in during the quasi steady state situation. So, I mean to say that suppose this is the this is the profile at this particular point the similar kind of the profile we can expect at this particular section. So, that is and this section is continuously moving one particular direction with respect to the solidification velocity. So, therefore, speed of the welding is such that solid interface is maintained that particular shape and position also and solid definitely solidification follows just looking into where the maximum temperature gradient exists in the melt pool. Now, if we talking if we are talking about the similarity to the continuous casting process continuous casting process we can see it is also there is a withdrawal of the plate the solidified plate is continuously move uh, we can we, we are getting and this is the solid isotherm and there is a continuous casting process molten metal is poured here and then plate is output with certain velocity. So, from the mathematical point of view or with the application of the equations is the this these uh, similarities there in continuous casting and fusion welding process. Now, in contrast to the continuous welding process, but oil solidification there is a difference only that it involves a uh, mold the oil solidification involves a mold that has the approximately the similar composition. I mean to say that in continuous casting process when we pour the mold molten material. So, it there is a interface between the mold and the liquid metal, but in case of the uh, welding process there is a uh, the interface between the solid and the liquid metal. So, basically solid and the liquid composition are both, but the only distinguish in the different phases in the solid and liquid phase which is different from the continuous casting process because continuous casting process the composition are not the same because mold metal composition and the, the cast metal com composition are, are different in these two cases. But of course, they create one interface or that boundary. So, in that way the continuous casting and welding process are different in this case. Now, all these cases is a characterized by the in welding or continuous casting process it is characterized by the heat flux or maybe total heat content total heat amount of the heat apply uh, during the welding process. So, if I assume that rate of the heat input Q. So, Q can be here we are assuming the Q basically 
uh, joule per second. So, we can say that energy input per unit time. So, other way it is a you can say quantity as a in terms of the power also. So, in um, SI unit it is a watt. So, that way Q is determined in case of the welding process, but is the this Q is basically calculated with the application of the arc to the welding plate. So, that the representation of the arc, so total heat input to the to the plate that is represented in terms of the Q. But in case of the continuous casting, Q is can be defined or represented by the effective volume of the heat content of the this melt volume. So, it actually depends on the volume and the temperature of the metal. So, it can be the above the melting point temperature or what is the amount of the superheat that actually decide the what is the effective heat content in continuous casting process. Now, if we look into the welding process, so assuming the arc is movement that means, the in arc welding process arc is moving with velocity v uh, and in continuous casting v is the velocity of the plate, this is the difference plate of the withdrawal. So, this uh, arc is moving with certain velocity v and uh, from the arc there is a heat input with a small q we can consider this way and we are assuming the thermal conductivity of the metal being welded that is, uh, is a k and this thermal conductivity k and in this case thickness of the plate we are assuming it is a h of the cast or welded that is a h and the time variable equal to t. Now, if we are try to understand the heat transfer and in this welding process or continuous casting process. So, basically we need to look into the three dimensional heat conduction equation. So, assuming that arc is moving along the x axis along one particular direction. So, in that case three dimensional heat conduction equation we can write in this way the del by del x k into del t by del x k is the thermal conductivity is the temperature and you can see the similar along y z component and the rho C p is the the specific heat of the material oil mat oil material density of the oil material V is the welding velocity actually in this heat conduction equation we are incorporated the effect of the velocity V such that we can represent the heat source with respect to the moving coordinate system. So, here if we see instead of writing x rather we are assuming the x minus V t because with respect to time t uh, this a position is continuously changing that means point of the uh, applied point of the heat application is continuously changing with respect to time t. So, if we incorporate here then equation can be is modified here x minus v t because v t is the the it represents the distance basically. So, since we have written del a uh, del t by del uh, here x because it is we heat source is moving along the x axis. So, this equation we little modify by taking care of the uh, uniform velocity of the the welding process. So, with including this we can get this conduct heat conduction equation and if we solve this equation there are different ways to solve this heat conduction equation we can solve analytically we can solve this equation numerically with proper boundary conditions. And of course, even analytically also there are so many the solution quality depends on the what kind of assumptions we, we, we can do uh, we can incorporate or uh, in certain cases, but exact with the proper boundary condition of the welding process along with the heat conduction equation the exact analytical solution is actually not possible. So, we usually used to solve following the any kind of the numerical methods numerical application for example, finite element method can be used finite difference or finite volume method can also be used to solve this heat conduction equation to understand the temperature distribution in a uh, during the welding process. But in this in this particular course or in this particular uh, case we consider the analytical solution with the assumptions actually because we without any specific assumptions we will not be able to get the, the analytical solution is not possible. So, that is why uh, we can get the analytical solution we will discuss later on that how to get the solution um, of this particular equation. Now, if we solve this equation analytically 3 d heat conduction equation we will be getting the this uh, we represent we will be able to represent the temperature distribution as a the isotherm the as a isotherm means as the constant for example, uh, assuming that uh, this is the equation of the uh, this is this is one isotherm that means at any point this all this isotherm temperature remains the same. So, this different temperature isotherm create the different kind of the profile. So, if I assume this is the profile of a mold uh, this is the suppose this is the melting point 
or it is solid, uh, solid, uh, solidus temperature or liquidus temperature. So, this is represented by one special distribution of the temperature and that is called the isotherm. Now, it is uh, the isotherm can also be like this also and that isotherm uh, can be the different temperature which is less than the melting point temperature some uh, solid state phase transformation temperature we can consider and that represented by the arson. So, that is why we, we you easily used to find out the different isotherm uh, by solving this heat conduction equation and it is a approximately for a particular direction spatial the distance between the isotherm the distance between the two isotherm for example, this distance between the two isotherm is basically characterized by the approximately given by the lambda x y z x y z the special distribution c we, when we are not basically presenting this uh, value not in terms of the time rather in the special distribution of temperature. So, gap between these two can be represent can also depends on the proportional to the what is the heat amount heat applied to this uh, welding plate heat conductivity velocity of the welding and the thickness of the plate. So, all this matters to find out the different isotherm uh, dur during this calculation. Now, if we check the dimensionality of this this quantity of this expression, it is actually dimensionality is the, the temperature here and in terms of the uh, in SI usually we put it in terms of the Kelvin actually. Now, if you are assuming the similar isotherm distribution in the melt of course, in this this parameter here you can see the, the variable parameter is the thermal conductivity, the heat content, heat applied to the plate, the what is the welding velocity, what is the thickness of the plate all these matters to decide the isotherm. Now, similar isotherm distribution of the melt if we assuming the Q V that means the total heat applied the velocity welding velocity and thickness of the plate are the constant, but material are different such that their properties thermal conductivity are different. In this case, thermal conductivity are different. So, we can get the this gap can be or can also be different. So, therefore, the distance between the isotherm which is characterized by this values of lambda actually increases substantially as a function of the heat conductivity as a function of the k. So, k is the more influencing parameter here to change this the isotherm uh, the gap between the two isotherm or distribution of the uh, or shape of the isotherm basically the if we keep other parameter same. So, we will be able to see the influence of the thermal conductivity for the different material. So, we compare the aluminum and stainless steel we know that aluminum is having very uh, uh, good thermal conductivity as compared to the austenitic steel. So, there is a huge difference in the thermal conductivity value. So, keeping on this thing other parameter same uh, if we consider do the analysis for the two different materials one is the aluminum another is the austenitic steel we can see that how what a the temperature isotherm are different. Just an example here in this case we consider the Q, Q is equal to 3.1 kilo joule per second is basically the 3 point Q equal to here Q equal to 3.1 kilo joule per second means the kilowatt power is applied here velocity 8 millimeter per second and h equal to 6.0 millimeter. So, with these parameters and if we see there is a temperature isotherm of course, we are following uh, a certain analytical solution with the other assumptions here, but approximately we can calculate the temperature isotherm from the uh, heat conduction equation. And here you can see the temperature profile for aluminum, this is for aluminum temperature profile and this is for the uh, austenitic stainless steel. In this case, if you see although welding velocity, thickness of the plate and the total heat input from the arc is the same these two cases, but temperature isotherm is there, there is a drastic difference uh, are, uh, are there that we can observe here also. So, here aluminum high thermal conductivity is very close to this kind of the oval shape and if the thermal conductivity is very low it is kind of the elongated profile we can observe. So, I mean to say that there is a drastic influence of the thermal conductivity uh, to identify or to calculate the temperature profile or temp, uh, uh, isotherm temperature isotherm in, in, uh, in any uh, fusion welding process. 
Now, it is a moral oval shape. So, we can we can say that if the in this case if it is a spot welding process probably we can expect spot welding means velocity equal to 0, then you can expect exactly the profile can be the circular. So, similarly here also profile can be the circular, but radius of the circle for a particular isotherm can be should be different in these two cases because thermal conductivities are different in this case. So, now and since or even if it is a thermal conductivity is very high, even you assume the in ideally thermal conductivity tends to infinity, then also this profile is tends to close to the the tends to the uh, circular profile as compared to the other cases. So, here the carbon steel also the temperature isotherm or in this case the, the shape is in between the aluminum and austenitic steel. Austenitic steel. So, uh, in this case because carbon steel thermal conductivity it is more more than austenitic stainless steel, but it is less than that of the, the aluminum. So, that is how you can get this kind of profile. Here if you see uh, just an example here see the 600 means say here this I temperature isotherm representing by the 600 degree centigrade then 800 degree centigrade this is the temperature isotherm 1200 degree centigrade this is the temperature isotherm. So, just tracking the temperature isotherm if you plot the melting point temperature or solidus or liquidus temperature then the zone between the solidus or liquidus temperature or the zone uh, within the melting temperature that zone actually identify as a molten pool. And in that case the if you uh, 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 look into say I assume the 600 degree centigrade for plain carbon steel is a kind of uh, phase transformation occur. So, therefore, that 600 degree between 600 degree and 800 degree that indicates the heat affected zone or may, may be between 600 to 1200 degree centigrade that is the indicative of the heat affected zone. So, just defining the different isotherm from the solution. So, we can define the different zones during the oiling process. So, it can be the molten zone, it can be the heat affected zone or any transformation transform zone we can find out just by solution of the temperature distribution. So, here is the importance of the temperature distribution uh, associated with the oiling process. Now, uh, of course, in this figure we can see that apart from this thing thermal conductivity we also show the thermal diffusivity. If you see there is increasing diffusivity. So, increasing thermal diffusivity in this case we can say that temperature profile is actually changing. So, thermal diffusivity can be measured is the thermal conductivity divided by the rho density and specific heat that ratio actually indicates the thermal diffusivity. Usually conductivity is very high even density and specific heat is low that that kind of the material is having very good thermal diffusivity. So, therefore, aluminum is having thermal diffusivity is very high as well as the thermal conductivity also high as compared to the austenitic steel steel and we can get that this kind of the this uh, the temperature isotherm or the temperature profile from the analytical solution are completely different. So, therefore, once we understand the temperature distribution and of course, to the analysis of the heat flow in the welding process we can utilize the different way. Now, I will try to explain you the analytical so, uh, solution of the temperature distribution in the there is another kind of the uh, solution is available uh, the it is most widely available uh, solution associated with the any kind of the fusion drilling process that is called the moving point heat source on a semi infinite body. So, moving point heat source basically we are representing in this case that the heat source means the from the arc although it is in practical it is the uh, uh, it is the distributed heat source but we are assuming as a point heat source because when we are assuming the point heat source then we will be able to get one extract the very simple analytical solution of the temperature distribution in this particular case. So, here assuming the point heat source this is one assumption and there is no heat losses from the because we assume this semi infinite body. So, there is heat there is no heat losses from the boundary of the oiling plate with these two assumptions we will able to reach that this particular solution T equal to T 0 plus Q total heat applied and thermal conductivity R is the radial distance the is a radial distance from the origin it is a kind of variable here V is the oiling velocity and this is the exponential uh, e to the power minus V R minus X by 2 alpha alpha we already defined alpha is the thermal diffusivity for a particular material. So, this is the solution and if you observe carefully the solution with the assumptions of the point heat source and there is a no heat loss from the boundary we are getting this is the temperature distribution. Now, 
we can plot the temperature distribution um, uh, with respect to the x, y, z or maybe usually on the on, on because um, on a two dimensional case also then we will be able to find out the different temperature as soon as just we observe in the previous slide. Now, if we get the solution temperature distribution here you can see that this solution is independent of the thickness of the plate. So, that is the one type of the analytical solution we are getting. So, if you see in this expression there is no higher the thickness of the plate is incorporated here. So, that is why it is a very simple solution, but at the same time it is a effective solution to get the or maybe very simple solution effective way we can utilize the solution of the temperature distribution from the heat conduction equation we can apply to estimate the different temperature isotherm. We, we can see that what we can utilize this equation to uh, make some conclusion associated with the fusion welding process. Now, here heat source is moving of course, but here in this cases we are taking care of the moving heat source with the velocity v. So, that is that is the uh, maybe one advantage because we are in this expression it is included the velocity of the welding and opposite heat source is moving along the x axis uh, opposite direction with the velocity v. So, with this we are getting this solution. Now, r is the radial distance from the origin. So, if our origin 0 0 0 then at particular point x y z this is the r equal to x square uh, square root of x square plus y square plus z square and this represents the radial distance from the origin. So, this is the uh, typical characteristics of the temperature solution uh, for a semi infinite body having the moving he, moving point heat source and there is no loss from the boundary no loss of the heat from the boundary with this we are getting this solution. Now, one disadvantage or uh, uh, I can say that um, negative point of this particular solution is that the singularity problem exists at the origin basically we will not be able to get the solution at the origin of the coordinate system because there is assumptions of the point heat source. So, we are not able to depict the the no solution at the point heat source uh, at this point where the heat source is applied is basically origin origin of the coordinate system because uh, we will we will get the singularity problem associated with the solution. But anyway apart from this particular center point or any other point uh, we, will, we will be able to calculate the uh, temperature isotherm uh, using this particular uh, solution method. So, here further we can estimate once we get the temperature distribution we will be able to estimate the cooling rate and the temperature gradient and from the horizontal 3D equation. So, actually it is called the this equation is the Rosenthal's 3D equation is the most widely used in the uh, associated with the welding process. So, we can utilize this equation to calculate the other parameters say this is the temperature distribution T is the temperature variable T 0 is the initial temperature or ambient temperature heat content pi k r exponential minus v r minus x by twice alpha. So, definitely we, we try to find out this thing that uh, del x by del t. So, x dx by dt what we can the velocity if it is moving the uh, heat source is moving along the x axis. So, therefore, dx by dt represents the velocity v. So, that is we assume del x by del t t del t del small t temper time uh, with reference to the partial derivative t temperature as a constant that means with the variable and it represents the velocity v. Now, along the x axis we can say that along the heat source is moving the along the x axis. So, along the x axis y equal to 0, z equal to 0 we can see. Now, r equal to square root of x square plus y square plus z square. So, along the x axis y and z equal to 0. So, it becomes square root. So, it becomes x. So, therefore, that is I have written r equal to x along the x axis. So, therefore, temperature gradient uh, del t by del x. So, if we, if we perform the derivative of this del t by del x as a as a constant the t is the variable because this is partial derivative keeping the other variable as a, const, a constant. So, at this variable with respect to keeping small t as a constant del t by del x temperature gradient we can calculate here is these things and from here if we do perform the derivative uh, uh, for del, uh, the first derivative this expression we are getting this thing uh, this uh, minus q equal to twice pi k x square representing this thing it is a if you see this 
gives the heat applied total this thing and k and in terms of the variable uh, x square. So, here x square and of course, when y equal to 0, z equal to 0 and r equal to x, we can getting that that r equal to uh, when uh, 6 uh, put here this variable here the x y equal to 0 z equal to 0 and r equal to x. So, r equal to x means this becomes 0 e to the power 0 equal to 1 and this become t equal to t 0 plus q by twice pi k into r is replaced by x. So, that is where written t minus t. So, here we are getting t equal to t 0 plus q into twice pi k into r equal to x here and here e to the power 0 e to the power 0 equal to 1. So, t equal to t 0 plus q by twice pi k into x. So, here we are getting at this part along the x axis and uh, now you replace is here t minus t 0 equal to this and here if you see that uh, uh, in terms of the here we are replacing x because x is the variable here. So, you can calculate from here x equal to uh, t minus t minus t 0 okay, x equal to q by twice pi k t minus t 0 this we are getting x. So, simply putting the values of the x here this expression x square put the values of the x we are getting this is the expression minus twice pi k t minus t 0 square by q. Uh, once we are getting this expression, so therefore, we can see that uh, del t by del t. So, cooling because change of temperature with respect to change of time. So, this actually increases the cooling rate and cooling rate suppose as a particular point as a particular position. So, where spatial coordinate is fixed here. So, x at del t by del t the is indicates the cooling rate. So, here you can see that it is actually del t by del t the partial derivative you can see there are two variable t and other t. So, del t by del x by del x by del t del t by del x and del x by del t and if you get it from here if you put del t by del x equal to uh, del t by del x we have already calculated this value and uh, del x by del t this is the velocity equivalent to the this thing del velocity we put it we are getting twice pi k into v t minus t 0 square by q. So, this is the uh, here you can see that we can estimate the temperature gradient and then temperature gradient and then we are estimating the cooling rate associated with the this uh, Rosenthal's 3D equation. Now, from the expression what we can we can conclude here that cooling rate actually reduces significantly by the preheating. By preheating means if say if you T0, T0 is the initial temperature. So, if we heat the material initially, so T0 values will increase. So, therefore, T minus T0 gap will reduce. So, therefore, cooling rate is reduced simply we can say that by increasing the value of the T0 or other way we can say that cooling rate can be reduced by doing some preheating of the sample. So, before welding if we preheat the sample say 300 degree to 400 degree centigrade then the temperature difference will be reduced such that it will reduces the uh, cooling rate. So, by by the effect of the preheating other cases we can see cooling rate also decreases with increasing the Q by V. So, Q by V Q by small v here actually. So, here you can say that this expression can also be write minus twice pi k t minus t 0 square divided by q by velocity v. So, q by velocity v sometimes we represent the q by v is basically heat input per unit length to the system input per unit length. So, therefore, it indicates the, the heat input per unit length because uh, when heat source is moving. So, then in, in that case we consider this parameter not only exactly the heat input but that we taking we can take care of the velocity also and then Q by V indicates the what is the total heat input per unit length during this process. So, that is where this. So, therefore, we can say that Q by V is the heat input per unit length cooling rate also decreases with increasing the Q by V that means per that this value that means heat input per unit length 
by increasing this value. So, by increasing this value q by v, v value by increasing this we can we can cooling rate is actually decreases. So, increasing q by v value is can be done to different other either heat input is we can increase the heat input uh, um, uh, to the this uh, welding process is much much more or the velocity is low. In these two cases q by v can also be increased. So, there also increasing this value cooling rate decreases and other part is the temperature gradient decreases with increasing q also that we can see temperature gradient also here q is increasing that means heat input increasing that means temperature gradient also decreases. So, therefore, we have some relation between these parameters we can make some conclusion that it is a simple analogy. Uh, just following this simple calculation the result of 3D equation we can say all these 3 is important which is basically uh, able to understand the, the correlate the microstructure associated with the different welding processes in this case the heat put is low or more based on that we can make some conclusion uh, with this analogy or with this analysis. Now, in summary of the if you look into the oil solidification we can say that solidification is actually initially occurs epitaxially that we have already discussed in the last mod uh, this last class also previous class when uh, this epitaxially and uh, that started from the melted back grains. So, with the melted back grains the um, from there the each uh, the solidification initially starts from the epitaxial growth is usually occurs with the of the base metal. Now, if you want to crystal growth is relatively slow, if you want to do that with crystal growth is relatively slow is basically in that case initially first they form the planar front and then fine cellular substructure is usually formed if it is associated with the uh, relatively slow crystal growth. But in the intermediate stage of the growth it is basically cellular dendritic growth is basically leading to the coarse columnar crystal structure growth and that is usually in the paper direction 100 direction in case of the crystal. So, the structure growth is uh, started like that initially is a planar growth initially in the very slow, then cellular substructure from cellular to the core columnar kind of the crystal usually grows uh, in case of the um, in, in uh, 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 this metallic material associated with the solidification of the oiling process. But if you look into that the final stage of the solidification process the uh, usually occurs at the center line it is associated with the rapid uh, crystal growth because at the when reaching to the center point at this point the different zone is more or less close to the very uh, almost low temperature zone uh, in, in that case. So, therefore, when low temperature zone suddenly the large uh, this particular zone is basically associated with the very rapid crystal growth and therefore, in that cases there are chances of the segregation might occur uh, during the solidification process. So, of course, depending upon the welding conditions the final dendritic may be equiaxed structure uh, is, is possible in this case. But in general if you want to obtain the very fine grain structure welding structure on the fusion zone there are different ways to promote the formation of the equiaxed kind of fine, uh, fine grain structure that is the by adding some inoculating agent such that at the same time a different position this uh, nucleation starts at the different position rate of the nucleation is much more and it is well distributed throughout the structure. Now, other point is the oil pool string effect also if you the somehow external string effect, uh, mechanism we can put it then also it enhance the nucleation process and it can be done also by arc oscillation, arc pulsation the continuously varying the creation from dynamic arc also that actually helps to create the, the rate of the nucleation process. And of course, stimulated surface nucleation also helpful uh, to uh, starting the nucleation portion at the several positions and the, uh, at the high rate also such that the at the same at the same time so many nucleation start at the different position and then after that they will try to grow and when the competitive growth occurs almost equally uh, from the all uh, all different zones. So, therefore, in that case they will try to create the, the very fine grain structure associated with the uh, welding process. Now, 
uh, we will try to look into uh, different aspects. Now, uh, once we understand the solidification process actually, then uh, solidification um, the different uh, structure it forms, different modes of the solidification, nature of the solidification at the different position of the uh, oil pool also. Now, to try to link with the, the what kind of the oil microstructure usually form and might be having some kind of the link with the, the solidification behavior of the uh, oil pool. So, to do that once we try to understand the oil microstructure, we need to understand the uh, different phase diagram. So, one is the one diagram is the equilibrium phase diagram and we understand the equilibrium phase diagram is associated with the this all the information with respect to the composition, uh, different composition and temperature we will be able to know what are the different phases exist for a binary phase uh, binary uh, alloy system. So, in that case we can uh, understand that all these phases is actually found the under equilibrium condition. It means that there is a infinite time is available to uh, uh, to form one uh, uh, particular or to reach the equilibrium conditions and to get one particular phase actually. This is the one diagram where you can get the only information under the equilibrium condition different phases associated with the binary alloy system. So, that is the first important the equilibrium phase diagram to understand one particular alloy system. The next important is that time temperature transformation diagram. So, time temperature transformation diagram is little bit more realistic than as compared to the equilibrium phase diagram because time temperature transformation diagram we get the information of the isothermal transformation from one phase to another phase. So, that information we will be able to get from the TTT diagram, but in this case all the transformation diagram is occurs at the isotherm uh, that, that constant temperature. So, here you can find out if you observe that there is a one transformation starts one particular time and then transformation ends. Actually, this particular graph we will be able to get the x axis represents the time frame and uh, y axis actually uh, represents the uh, different temperature. So, we will be able to know at the different temperature one the transformation start time and transformation ends time uh, for a uh, uh, for a particular one phase to another phase. So, that information we will be able to get, but only um, uh, uh, limitation of this diagram is that this transformation occurs at constant temperature, but in practical transformation may not occur at the constant temperature isotherm condition there may be continuous uh, variation of the temperature. So, in that case it is more realistic to understand the CCT diagram that is called the continuous cooling transformation diagram. Here we can represent the of course, the, the x axis and y axis x axis is the similarly the time frame and y axis is basically the the uh, temperature in this case, but in, in this we will be able to plot here at the different uh, cooling at different cooling rate what kind of the phase actually occurs and the boundary of the different phases with reference to the cooling rate we will be getting to the continuous cooling transformation diagram. But in this case it is more realistic because most of the heat and heat treatment design is usually um, done or uh, by the from the information of the continuous cooling transformation diagram. We will see that in one, one case is the how to utilize the continuous cooling transformation diagram to understand the different phases. But in case of the oiling process of course, we can see that oil zone is actually uh, subjected to the variable cooling rate. It means that there is a there is a wide drastic variation of the temperature is usually occurs in uh, both molten zone as well as in the heat affected zone. But molten zone is associated with the solidification process, but heat affected zone is associated with the solid state phase transformation process. And of course, in this case if you ask that all these three diagrams are important to understand because we need to identify one particular temperature what phase exists. At the same time we need to know that in particular cooling rate so is also important. So, uh, such that we will be able to predict the, the different kind of the microstructure associated with the oiling process or other. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, other processes also uh, which occurs the microstructure forms after the uh, solidification. Now, since it is subject to the variable cooling rate. So, just an example uh, if you see this is the uh, laser this particular simulation is performed in the laser welding process. So, here the laser power equal to 1 kilowatt sheet thickness equal to only 1 millimeter and also laser on time 20 millisecond. So, after 20 millisecond heating then we allow to cool. So, we allow to cool and after 20.6 millisecond this is the shape of the, the oil pool. So, red zone is basically indicates the uh, oil pool shape and the remaining the other color it indicates the 
that is the heat affected zone. So, this kind of the information is useful and we can see that uh, time, te time temperature history also time temperature curve if you see that different location of the oil pool if you take a cross section of a plate. So, here the different angle 45 degree and 90 degree angle. So, along the depth direction uh, over the uh, width direction we can see the different position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 the different location. We can see that during the continuous process uh, during the heating process uh, oiling uh, as well as the cooling process all, all if you look into this thing then we can get at the different location how the temperature can vary. Here this diagram if we see the 1, 2, point, point 3, 4, 3 point is this one 4, 5, 6. If you see there are the different zone molten zone and the heat affected there is a variation of the temperature the different direction are completely different. So, this variable temperature is basically is associated with the, the variable cooling rate also cooling rate may not be con or, or might be temperature variation is there might be cooling rate can also be close to the very constant values so rate of the cooling but not the temperature temperature variation is there. So, cooling rate might be the constant value. So, with this thing with this in, uh, uh, and if you see the cooling rate also different at the different 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all the different position rate of the cooling are different. So, we can expect the, the different different microstructure is formed and depending upon the rate of the uh, cooling during the oiling process. So, this kind of the information is basically useful to understand what is the we can estimate what is the cooling rate one particular position and that is why we are discussing the heat flow analysis associated to the welding process and based on the cooling rate we can predict the microstructure also. We will try to link with the little bit the rate of the cooling or other aspects of the solidification and what can be the final microstructure associated with the different materials in a fusion welding process. So, here we can see the oil microstructure in low carbon steel. So, oil microstructure in low carbon steel we can see uh, in this cases basically the austenitic the gamma phase is basically high temperature phase is the cool down from the high temperature and here in this case when the austenitic phase cool down in the because austenitic phase is the high temperature phase. So, here when it is cool down usually alpha ferrite nucleus at the grain boundary and it grow and it can create the uh, Wittmanston pattern in this case uh, uh, in the structure morphology is something uh, different in case of the uh, low carbon steel also. But at the low temperature phase, but it may happen from the cooling down from the high temperature then this is particular morphology or structure is usually formed and in this case, but in the low temperature it is too slow for the Wittmanston ferrite to grow. In that case in the within the uh, grain interior in that case what happens instead of this particular ferrite it creates the acicular ferrite can be can nucleates and the from the uh, inoculations uh, from their acicular ferrite can also be. I mean to say that this if you see in the in the one particular material there is cooling rate are different or from high temperature zone to or uh, um, uh, gradually reaching to the low temperature zone their their morphology can be different also or in other cases in even for the at low temperature when cooling rate is follow. So, it is a so very slow cooling rate is there in that cases the morphology can also be different and usually you can see that uh, associated with this thing the in low carbon steel also if we analyze we can say that the you see these are the different type of the structure uh, microstructure usually form. So, grain boundary ferrite, polygonal ferrite, Wittsminton ferrite, acicular ferrite, then upper bionite, lower bionite, bionite structure all these kind of the different phases or structure is usually form associated with the low carbon steel and all depends on the, the temperature gradient, what is the solidification occurs, how, what are the grain growth occurs and what are the cooling rate is usually followed all deep the structure depends on all these parameters. And usually uh, in case of uh, just an example for example, uh, we can see that we will be able to understand that what are the cooling rate actually affect the different structure is a very simple example and I hope uh, it is a very common in engineering materials course also the different cooling rate the if we follow the CCT diagram of the 434J type of the 4340 type steel particular alloy steel and this is a very standard graph is available and here the graph is showing that the CCT diagram CCT continuous cooling transformation diagram 
one particular 4340 type of the steel we can see that when the transformation starts at this particular point and this red dotted line indicates the one constant cooling rate here and if you see x axis the time frame is given and y axis is basically temperature here. So, it start the transforming on the from this particular uh, the zone the above 700 degree centigrade around. So, it is a gradually cooling, cooling to and but we follow certain cooling rate say 8.3 degree centigrade uh, degree centigrade per second this is the cooling rate it follow one particular structure even it is the cooling rate is more than that it indicates the uh, left hand side of this curve. So, that indicates the cooling rate is high. So, when cooling rate is more than 8.3 degree centigrade per second we can expect with the martensitic structure. So, this information will be able to get from the CCT diagram for this particular steel. Even for example, also even cooling rate is basically 0 0.03 degree centigrade to 8.3 degree centigrade. In this case, we can get the mixture of the martensite plus bionite structure. So, that we will be able to get at the final structure and of course, if you see this is the uh, time frame also x axis. So, when you are getting the martensitic structure, the required time is very low. So, very quickly the, the if you follow the high cooling rate means at the very low time we are getting the structure. So, basically diffusion time is basically reduced then we will be able to get the towards the kind of the martensitic structure. But if we allow more diffusional time the diffusion to occurs then we will get towards the mixture of martensitic plus bionite. So, between these two cooling rate so gradually right hand side the cooling rate is actually constant cooling rate is actually decreasing and all this color different color they represent the constant cooling rate over this curve. So, at the different different cooling rate we can get this zone is the martensitic plus ferrite plus bionite. So, ferrite structure is gradually formed at the low cooling rate. So, here so here you can see the martensitic structure, ferrite structure, perlite, bionite structure, but at the cooling rate is very low 0 0.006 degree centigrade per second we can get the mixture of the ferrite plus perlite. So, I mean to say that in this case we can understand the effect of the cooling rate. So, very low cooling rate we can getting the mixture of the structure ferrite plus perlite but gradually we can see the very high cooling rate we are getting the martensitic structure in between cooling rate we can mixture of the martensite plus other bionite or mixture of the bionite, martensitic, ferrite, perlite all this kind of the structure we are we are getting depending upon the rate of the cooling. So, this is an example and from there at the different alloy steel or having the uh, this similar kind of the diagram if we follow this binary diagram we will get all the information what kind of the cooling rate we should follow such that we will be able to get one particular structure. So, that is the influence of the cooling rate in the oil microstructure. This here also just other example also associated with the oil microstructure one that is called the is so occurs laser oiling of the austenitic stainless steel. Austenitic stainless steel if you see if you follow the figure also here you can see the microstructure if you observe it we see that all different kind of the structure. So, here see that uh, fusion boundary fusion boundary zone is more or less it is from the microstructure you can identify this around 25 micrometer. And here you can see the lathy delta ferrite structure, feathery ferrite structure because the structure means this morphology we can for we can see from the diagram also. Here skeletal structure also can also be formed. Uh, prior austenitic grain also this is the prior austenitic grain if you see it is the mark here the by the arrow mark. So, partially transform the gamma phase so or gamma phase no, austenitic phase partially transform not fully transform the gamma phase. So, all this mixture of structure is actually getting in, in actual uh, welding process and this happens because of the so variable cooling rate is actually we, we, we see during the welding process. So, different position cooling rate varies. So, based on that we can get the mixture of the different structure or, or microstructure are different their morphology are different. Okay. So, overall you can see uh, the if you study the in in case of the laser oiling of the crystal steel we can see that mixture of the lathy type as well as the skeletal delta ferrite. Actually delta ferrite structure is the high temperature phase actually delta ferrite structure exists, but during the cooling phase we can get the lathy and the skeletal delta ferrite mixture can be there, but in this case the proportion of the lathy delta ferrite increases when cooling rate increases. So, this kind of the correlation with the microstructure you can film when cooling rate is much more increases we can get the delta ferrite content is much more lathy delta ferrite content is much more lathy means this is a morphology say so, the uh, uh, this delta ferrite is much more in this case. 
but he also observed the when we get measure also the thickness of the primary dendritic lath size is basically found to be around 393 nanometer and to between 484 nanometer. So, in that range we can get the average thickness of the primary dendritic lath size. So, that also we can measure the dendritic arm size can also be different uh, depending upon the cooling rate uh, uh, during this process. But finally, we can observe the restrained diffusion occurs during the delta ferrite to gamma stenotic transformation and that actually influences the generation of the delta ferrite, lathy delta ferrite is promote rather than the skeletal structure, skeletal morphology at very high cooling rate. We, here also you can see the cooling rate is actually very high, we can expect the lathy delta ferrite structure in case of the ostentatory as compared to the skeletal morphology is more promoted. So, we mean to say that we can see that if you see that the structure is actually very, very complex and mixture of the different kind of the uh, morphology and uh, morphology and grains uh, the structure are completely different at the different cooling rate. But to some extent we can understand it is a basically more or less the material specific and here we try to understand the this type of the structure associated with the austenitic stainless steel. Now also uh, even we can see the fusion welding of uh, this uh, microstructure uh, of SS310 that is kind of the SS means the stainless steel particular grade 310 usually in this case the nickel content is high. We know the, the usually the chromium and nickel content is more much more in case of the stainless steel but SS310 the nickel content is high as compared to the SS309. So when nickel content is high we can expect that that consists of the primary austenite dendrites usually and interdendritic inter space is basically is the delta ferrite. If you see the delta ferrite is the high temperature phase structure, so interdendritic space is occupied by the delta ferrite structure, but primary dendrites is basically uh, the primary austenitic the austenite dendrites. So, austenitic phase is mainly the primary dendritic, but interdendritic space is basically delta ferrite and between the primary and secondary dendritic arms it is a field by the delta ferrite. So, when it is a nickel content is high in case of SS310 uh, stainless steel, but if you see there is a change of the composition high chromium content in case of the SS309 the particular stainless steel particular grade of the stainless steel we can see that primary the consists of the primary lathy delta ferrite as the uh, there within the austenitic matrix. So, here you see when there is a change in the composition nickel or chromium in these two cases we can get the, the dendritic composition dendritic structure are different in these two cases. Similarly, we can see that uh, uh, because why we can get this kind of things because we, we observe that the during the solidification also the solute concentration uh, during the liquid phase and uh, we observe there is solute concentration because it is a mostly occurs the non equilibrium solidification usually occurs and the in this case in the in front uh, this uh, in the liquid phase the there is a redistribution of the solute usually occurs. So, and when it is associated with the high cooling rate so redistribution of the solute depends on the and solute redistribution is more occurs in the solidification when at high cooling rate when chromium and nickel ratio is basically low. So, there much more redistribution occurs ok. So, in this case uh, but when the high chromium nickel ratio is much high higher in this case alloy solidifies as delta ferrite as the primary phase in this case. So, it depends on the the solute content or the ratio of the chromium and nickel that we can get or at the high temperature uh, the high, high cooling rate and therefore, in this cases the the redistribution behavior of the solute are different in this case that is we are getting the different phases also. So, high chromium nickel ratio alloy solidify delta price as the primary phase in this case and their ferrite content increases that means delta ferrite ferrite content increases with increasing the cooling rate. So, with increasing the cooling rate the ferrite content is actually increases in this case because delta to gamma transformation having less time. So, transformation time is less. So, that means uh, in this case that is why we can get when cooling cooling rate is much more means the transformation from one phase to another phase is in general we can understand the less time is available to transform from one phase to uh, other phase at the high cooling rate. 
So that is why we can increase so del delta phi is the primary phase even cooling rate also increases then delta phi content also increases but it is associated with the high ratio of the chromium and nickel ratio but it may not be true in case of the high cooling rate when chromium uh, nickel ratio is low in that cases the solute redistribution is may be more, uh, uh, more uh, as compared to the high chromium to nickel ratio. So, I mean to say that the solidification behavior in these two cases are different and because solute content uh, also different in this cases. So, we can get the different morphology, different structure associated to the two different type of the uh, steel. Now, once we are discussing the uh, different uh, solidification their microstructure also it is also important to understand that solidification cracking. Solidification cracking also important phenomena associated with the, the solidification in case of the welding process. So, in general there is a usual problem associated with the, uh, the welding process that uh, the, the hot cracking or the solidification cracking process so immediately we can get after welding process we can get the crack. But why, what can be the reason uh, usually we get the solidification cracking. So, one is that the what are the different parameters actually we need to look into so to understand the solidification cracking uh, during the oiling process. So, one first parameter there are four points I have mentioned here. So, one important parameter is the temperature gradient. So, what temperature gradient is there because temperature gradient is basically calculates what is the thermal strains available. So, what is the thermal strain is basically generated during the solidification process and that also depends on the uh, this uh, temperature gradient is basically we can understand the temperature gradient or temperature difference between the spatial difference of the temperature over the particular zone. So, thermal strain can also be calculated. So, coefficient of thermal expansion into uh, delta T. So, coefficient of thermal expansion uh, uh, that we know uh, part uh, uh, change of the this thing. The, length with this reference to the power unit degree of the temperature and what is the temperature differences that actually induces the thermal strain. So, if the thermal strain is too high or critical value exceeds the critical value then also we can expect that there might be having some uh, crack due to the presence of the temperature gradient. We are, we are telling although we are using the temperature difference here, but we are telling this is the temperature gradient because temperature gradient we are talking about it depend it takes care of the spatial differences one particular space what is the difference of the temperature. So, therefore, temperature gradient is one of the uh, important parameter apart from this the compatibility of the various, various phases. So, they form the different phases and the composition also different for the different phases. So, therefore, the compatibility issue between the different phases may also induce some kind of the, the influence of the uh, cracking during the solidification process. Apart from this thing if presence of the low melting point component. So, that may create some kind of the grain boundary embrittlement because the low melting point material can penetrate the grain boundary and its initiation of the uh, creates the grain boundary embrittlement or create uh, started initiation of the crack usually occurs and that that is the also responsible for, for the solidification cracking, but it is basically because of the, the presence of the low melting point material uh, in, in, a, in a alloy system or during the oiling process that creates the embrittlement of the grain boundary. Then other point is the volumetric contract during the cooling process because we see the volumetric contract with the there is a shrinkage volume is associated with this thing and there might be having different phases also all the different phases shrinkage volume are different that actually creates some kind of the, the, the induced stress and finally associated with the formation of the, the crack uh, during the solidification process. Now, usually uh, two types of the cracks one is the hot cracking that just we have discussed the hot cracking phenomena and usually occurs at the elevated temperature and that is also called the solidification cracking but there is other type of cracking may also occur that is called the cold cracking. But cold cracking occurs usually after the solidification process and over the stipulated period of uh, time and that is also called the hydrogen cracking also because this cold cracking is usually occurs because uh, uh, due to the induction of the hydrogen and uh, of the of the oil component. So, therefore, that cold cracking can be a problem associated with the uh, this thing, but anyway this is different from the solidification cracking because cold cracking might happen after 24 hours also and uh, it depends on the what the rate of the hydrogen is diffuses in a, in a structure it depends on this thing. But anyway it is different from the 
solidification cracking or, or we are looking here only for the solidification cracking or. Now, if you look into that once you understand the different cracking phenomena, but if you look into the general measure how to prevent the cracking the solidification cracking associated with this thing maybe some general understanding will help to reduce the cracking associated with the welding process. One is that minimize the stresses from the shrinkage during the cooling. So, if you try to during the shrinkage volume uh, or of the different phases if we try to minimize this then the this can reduce the formation of the uh, cracking. Of course, it is actually uh, required to change the design. Design we have to look into the design aspect basically we need to control what temperature uh, we can promote what kind of the phases is much more. So, that kind of design is required here to understand to minimize the stresses uh, shrinkage of the different phases uh, in, in general. Then trials with the parameters and the sequence of the welding definitely trials of the parameters we need to find out the optimum set of the parameters which parameters is basically useful. So, uh, for a welding process I mean to say that maybe optimization of the heat input uh, from this thing uh, from the um, welding arc. So, that may it help to reduce the, the this uh, the cracking phenomena also and apart from the sequence of the this thing welding also sequence means mean to say that maybe we cannot uh, not necessary to move only one direction we can put the one direction then we change the direction basically path we can design such that it will try to reduce the uh, maximum difference of the temperature uh, during the welding process. So, if you looking into that perspective and if you design the path that might also reduce the, the cracking phenomena associated to the welding process. Even apart from this thing preheating of the component to be welded if you preheat the oil, oil uh, sample uh, before welding process that actually reduces the temperature differences on different position of the uh, component. So, th this is the simple way to reduce the temperature difference and finally, try to reduce the solidification cracking uh, during the welding process. So, apart from this thing we can follow the we may not follow very rapid cooling also we can follow very uh, uh, slow cooling or maybe moderate cooling rate and by avoiding the rapid cooling rate might be the one of the solution to reduce the solidification cracking also uh, during this process. So, all this actually general measure to prevent the cracking phenomena associated with the welding process if we look into this particular aspects and based on that if we do in depth analysis of all these individual aspects then it is possible to reduce the solidification uh, cracking during the welding process. And usually the solidification cracking by hot or hot cracking uh, what kind of the uh, parameter actually influence more on the on this uh, what cracking or solidification cracking that will try to identify here well, the parameters is like that low ductility material that means the if vitriol material we try to weld it that is might be having the one problem associated with the solidification cracking because for the brittle material may not be able to absorb lot a very small amount of the strain also thermal strain. So, that is why this might be the reason that uh, low absorptivity of the thermal strain will induce the uh, uh, solidification cracking. So, in that sense the material is having high ductility then this also having the, the low uh, um, chances for the formation of the, the solidification cracking. Apart from this thing there wide range of the solidification temperature also that means, the solidus and liquidus temperature gap is much more or if solidification occurs for a wide range that might be the another uh, reason uh, to induce the solidification cracking. So, uh, it can be uh, if it there is a too, uh, too much of range of the solidification that means, in that case the that might be having the takes much more time uh, to at the last stage of the solidification process in that case the segregation also influence the, the that actually changes the distribution of the, the elements uh, elements distribution also changes because of the if segregation occurs. So, that actually uh, enhances the uh, solidification cracking during the welding process. So, wide range of the solidification temperature is basically not good for the to avoid the solidification cracking. Apart from this thing presence of the impurity elements I think presence of the low melting point materials like sulphur, phosphorus and boron that actually create some kind of the embrittlement or other way the uh, this impurity actually 
um, create the solidification cracking during the process. So, we try to avoid the low melting point material uh, during this uh, in this particular when you try uh, this welding process. So, apart from this thing impurity segregation at the central line and mainly welding the segregation usually occurs at the weld central line and when it is there then it creates the sinkage effects. So, when the sinkage effects is there means I need to uh, raise basically need to adopt uh, need to absorb the large amount of the thermal strain and that actually induce some kind of the, the, uh, the stress critical values of the stress and that you finally leads to the solidification cracking. So, these are the parameters we try to look into so, uh, to avoid or to understand the solidification cracking associated to the oiling process. Now, the simple way we can avoid uh, the solidification cracking the presence of the uh, le low level of the carbon sulfur phosphorus and boron that actually low very small quantity presence of this thing actually reduces the chances of the solidification cracking. But high level of manganese uh, is also helpful because if you, it creates the uh, it react with the uh, other uh, impurity component and there uh, and at the same time reduces their effect. And if it is the create either heavier or um, this thing lighter uh, impurities after reaction with the MN, then it comes on the top surface of the oil pool and finally, we can remove it by chipping action all this thing. But high level of MN can other way reduce the effect of the other uh, impurity the low melting point impurity because they react with this thing and by reaction it the MN actually reduces their effect. So, this way it will it will try to reduce the uh, chances of the solidification cracking uh, in a in a oiling process. Now, here one one or two cases we will try to discuss that uh, solidification cracking in case of the laser oiling process that just to few points is very important to understand that decreasing the oiling heat heat input is the one of the uh, the uh, philosophical way we can understand the that reduces the prevent the hot cracking phenomena. So, one of the most effective way to reduce the uh, hot cracking is the the in principle the that by reducing the heat input of the welding process. So, one if you look into this thing in that sense the laser welding is the solution for the lower welding heat input, heat input because laser welding create uh, the oil profile is something different from the arc welding process. So, that is why in that sense it is uh, that kind of the profile will be created uh, the profile total profile will be created for example, arc welding is a big profile we can create laser welding can create it is the small volume profile. So, this profile uh, to create this thing it is less heat fluid as compared to the big profile by the arc welding process. So, that is why uh, this low heat input using the laser welding process can be a solution to prevent the the hot cracking phenomena associated with the welding process. Now, but uh, hot cracking susceptibility can also enhance it depends on the material type of the material is the for example, is the stainless steel and the nickel based alloy in that cases laser welding of these two types of the material there is a hot cracking susceptibility till is there is there, but it is a actually material specific. But although here the heat output is low, but the solidification cracking is basically occurs from the material point of view uh, in case of the stainless steel and the nickel based alloy. In this case, why it is like, like that? Because keyhole type of the high depth of penetration is, is the typical shape of the welding because typical shape of the welding creates the keyhole, the high depth of penetration is there associated with the welding process as compared to the, the other uh, arc welding process. And apart from this thing, a laser welding is actually associated with the very rapid cooling with extremely low heat input that can be the other reason uh, that actually influence the, the hot cracking susceptibility associated with the stainless steel and the nickel based alloy. But generally speaking decreasing the welding heat input is the one of the most effective counter measure for preventing the hot cracking. But uh, this is the uh, way to reduce the hot cracking, but uh, oiling methodology you have to choose in such a way that that this we can reduce the heat input in this case. So, laser welding in that we already discussed the laser welding is one of the safeguard against this problem, but of course, 
the it can provide a lower welding heat put, heat input it can provide the lower weld, welding heat put uh, in in case of the laser welding process that is why it can reduce the susceptibility to the hot cracking phenomena. But hot cracking susceptibility can also be enhanced at the southern for already example that is of course I think already explained the stainless steel and nickel based alloy hot cracking susceptibility is there but it is other reason because of the material specific but in this cases there are two reasons one is that the first is that due to the characteristic shape of the penetration of the laser weld. So, the laser welding shape weld pool shape are different from the arc welding process that is the one reason and second reason is the rapid solidification usually occurs when there is a in the laser welding process and that actually occurs at the extremely low heat input. So, that is why it reduces the the it actually enhances the the uh, successfully for this particular two material. Now, when you try to look into the rapid solidification and cooling during the oiling process, we can see that uh, already mentioned this is the second reason for rapid solidification using the laser oiling process. But in general, cracking occurs under the condition that thermal strain is subjected to the wells is basically exceeds more the critical value. So, we, we try to estimate the thermal strain value associated with the oiling process if it is it crosses the critical value then only it induces the the crack phenomena. So, in that cases the solidification, but what we can understand the uh, this thing in that case the solidification cracking will cover when the strain curve during the cooling intersect with the solidification brittleness temperature range. So, basically BTR range if it is cross this value then only there is a ch chances of the creation of the solidification cracking. So, this is the measure of, of somehow uh, the thermal strain. Uh, occurs during the solidification process, but we need to know the brittleness temperature range for this particular material. Now, we will try to see that here you can see the mechanism of the hot cracking, we see uh, this is the thermal strain, here you can see the x axis is the temperature, y axis is the strain that we can see here and we can see that we can plot the curve with the over the temperature that is the that is called the the solidification intersect with the solidification brittleness temperature range BTR. The strain curve intersect with the solidification brittleness range. Why we plot in this thing TL and TS between these two, and you can see the strain is not much high in this first cases. So therefore, it will not create any kind of the cracking. But if it is follow this over the critical values, so here in that case the red zone, the thermal strain is the between the solidus, liquidus, and solidus temperature thermal strain exceeds particular value. So, that is why we are getting some kind of the uh, cracking phenomena associated with this thing. So, it will create when the thermal strain exceeds some certain value then it will create the, the solidification cracking. But in this case we need to know the solid brittleness temperature range for a particular material. So, that information is required to understand whether solidification cracking will occurs or not. Now, in general measure uh, to prevent the any kind of the defects or uh, other um, the service condition improvement of the service condition of a welded joint usually we, we usually do the heat treatment process. So, in that case heat treatment what a heat treatment process occurs in this case we need to understand the phase transformation during the heating process. So, we need the uh, some in, uh, information from the equilibrium phase diagram is required then we need to know the effect of the cooling and the structural changes that means CCT diagram we having some understanding this there and the effect of the carbon content and the alloying elements that also having some understanding to understand the heat treatment process or to design the heat treatment process for a particular component after the oiling process because heat treatment is usually do to reduce the, the residual stress to improve the uh, mechanical properties of all these things usually after oiling process we perform the heat treatment process such that we can in some way we can uh, um, basically recover the recover the uh, ductility and we can recover the hard toughness also. But to recover the ductility and toughness through the heat treatment process we also the there is a reduction of the strength usually occurs as well as the hardness also occurs. But hardness the more uniformly distributed uh, and of course brittleness uh, is removed and then ductility is enhanced after the performing the heat treatment process. So, that is why heat treatment process is also important to perform after the oiling process to improve the uh, properties even uh, to uh, reduce the residual stress also 
we will try to do the we usually used to do the post oil heat treatment process associated with the welding process. Here I just want to make the uh, this uh, make the point here that the heat treatment is one of the effective way uh, to perform to improve the properties of the after welding process. So, in that case may be uh, uh, some recovery uh, of the ductility is there some recovery of the the toughness also possible uh, with the compensation with the the this uh, strength uh, uh, the strength of the the, uh, the welded component. So, that is why we perform the heat treatment process. So, now this I think is the re all related to the oiling process uh, their microstructure formation to the solidification behavior what kind of the solidified structure and cooling rate we can link it and how we can measure the this. Uh, the um, this uh, the solidification cracking phenomena associated with this what are the general rule or maybe I can say that uh, general um, methodology we should follow such that we can reduce the solidification cracking also associated with the oiling process that we have already discussed and I now I will try to look into uh, this explain you that the how what we are discussing the profile also here the some numerical solution of the temperature profile associated with the welding process and here we, we can perform only the heat transfer analysis and from this simulation we can understand that how it looks like uh, to better understand the um, this heat, heat, uh, uh, heat transfer analysis associated welding process and you can see there is a one particular color uh, this indicates the the oil profile here the molten zone include the heat effector zone it is moving one particular velocity this is the complete numerical simulation you can see the profile is more or less constant it means that when it is traveling particular zone this is it follow it is following the quasi steady state the quasi steady state means the profile is remain same at the any section of the uh, the oil point but initial phases the initial phase maybe when starting of the oiling process it becomes the to develop the oil pool one particular shape take some that is in transient state then which is varying with respect to time and same thing also applicable at the end stage also. But in between if you consider the if the total uh, welding path is this one. So, initial and final phases these are the uh, transient state to get this particular profile, but in between it is can quasi steady state it exists. So, that means it is a constant more or less constant profile and it is moving from one particular position to another position with the certain velocity is there and of course, the different color indicates the the different temperature profile and here if you see the if you see the color bar it indicates the this, this color are the different isotherm that define and that from this isotherm we can we can define this is the heat affected zone, this is the molten pool zone all kind of information we can do uh, using the temperature analysis also or even if you fix up uh, certain point also we can see that uh, a certain point if you fix up any any particular position thermocouple if you fix up you will be able to get that that a particular position how the temperature varying with respect to time. So, that is called the time temperature history and that time temperature history also important to understand the which phase, uh, which particular position gone through the uh, maximum temperature and where you can get the minimum temperature all kind of the information or what is the range of variation of the temperature with respect to time all information will be getting if you fix some point uh, over, over this space. So, this kind of the information is available from the simulation of the oiling process and we can utilize all the simulation uh, simulated temperature profile to predict the to design of the oiling process to understand the effect of the different parameters of the oiling process that means the parameters if we change heat input if we change what can be the change of the oil pool profile shape size okay, all this information are able to get uh, this uh, simulation that is why it is very important to un understand some point of time either you can do analytically or numerically the temperature profile is always useful to understand different aspects of the oiling process even using this temperature profile also we can analyze the solidification behavior associated to the oiling process. I think that is all uh, for the oiling the solidification of the oiling process. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.